real estate is a huge industry. There are lots of people interested in buying homes, apartments, and other properties. However, there are less people who are able to invest in real estate because not everyone has the money or the time to research what they're getting into. Watch on to see what private equity is and why this type of investment might be worth your time. Luckily for you, Real Talker, in this video, you will learn what private equity is in real estate. You will learn who to work with and why they are the best investment partners. As a real estate investor, it can be alluring to search for a different investment opportunity to diversify your holdings. Private equity real estate investing is a potential route to take if you are an accredited investor. Here is a tutorial to do this investment tactic in light of that. Continue watching to find out more about private equity investing, including what it is, how it operates, and its particular benefits and drawbacks. You ought to know more about whether or not investing in a private real estate fund is the best option for you after reading what we have to say. What is private equity real estate investing? Private equity real estate investing is a process of a company combining funds from outside investors and using those funds to buy and develop properties for a limited time before selling them. Before going into greater detail regarding the normal operations of these funds, it is important to understand that most institutional and accredited high net worth investors are the only ones who can typically use this way of investing. An investor typically has to invest at least $250,000 to participate in a real estate private equity fund. The minimal investment, however, can be in the millions for some funds. Although a private equity fund and a real estate investment trust may sound similar, there are a few significant differences between the two types of investment vehicles. For starters, Private real estate funds frequently need contributions to be held for a number of years, whereas investments in REITs are very liquid due to the fact that they are owned by the general public. Additionally, although private equity funds are subject to tight regulations and control, REITs are not subject to the same amount of scrutiny. Pros and Cons of Investing in Private Equity Real Estate With a better understanding of what private equity real estate is, and how it operates, you can go to the next phase, which is to consider the benefits and drawbacks of using this approach when making investment decisions. There will always be advantages and disadvantages to weigh, just like with any other kind of investing opportunity. We have outlined them for you. To decide whether or not it makes sense to add one of these real estate assets to your portfolio, read them over so that you can gain a better understanding. Pros the profits on private equity real estate investments are undoubtedly the biggest advantage. As you could have guessed, private equity investors have a right to a share of earnings or profits from each underlying investment as a result of their investment. Given the caliber of investments that these businesses are able to buy with that amount of pooled funds, these returns are frequently significant. Private equity firms, on the other hand, have a propensity to invest in a wide range of real estate assets. Thus, these investors additionally profit from diversification. Last but not the least, investors can earn profits while exerting hardly any active effort by delegating asset management to a fund manager. Cons Having said that, it's significant to keep in mind that, in addition to your minimum commitment, dealing with a private equity firm frequently entails additional expenses. In particular, you should be equipped to pay for some management costs. However, there is no cap on the amount of fees you can be charged because these funds are subject to very little regulation. Furthermore, a lot of these accounts are regarded as need-based investments. Therefore, you can be required to make as needed capital contributions. It is not uncommon for the fund to require investors to give up their entire share if they are unable to. Types of Private Equity Real Estate Investments In light of everything that I said, it is crucial to be aware of the many types of funds available to accredited investors who are considering private equity investment. These are what they are. Number 1. Core 
For people who are risk averse, core funds are an excellent choice. These funds frequently make investments in high quality, high value real estate assets, such as multifamily units that are 100% leased. Although they provide regular cash flow, the low level of risk frequently results in lesser returns. Number two, Core Plus. Core Plus funds, on the other hand, provide a combination of core and value added attributes. In this situation, they typically offer marginally better profits in exchange for their investors' willingness to assume greater risk. Number three, value added. The asset manager buys buildings using value added funds, engages in some redevelopment, and then sells them when the real estate market is booming. A medium to high level of risk is normally assumed when investing in this sort of fund, but there is also the possibility for higher rewards. Number four, opportunistic. Last but not the least, opportunistic funds offer the greatest potential for rewards but also include the largest amount of risk. These funds frequently make alternative investments in weak markets or underdeveloped land. How real estate private equity funds are organized. Those who engage in the private held equity of other companies, particularly those that hold real estate, are known as private equity firms. They normally use one of two transaction formats to accomplish this, either an individually syndicated contract which is our preferred investment type or a fund we will discuss the structure of private equity real estate funds why it matters and how they are classed in this post by the end investors should be able to clearly distinguish between a deal and a fund and have the knowledge necessary to decide which is more suited to their personal preferences the first national realty partners are a private equity company that focuses on the purchase and operation of retail centers with anchored grocery stores. Although they favor the single deal structure over a fund, they think it's crucial to understand both to enable investors to select the strategy that best suits their requirements. Private equity real estate funds versus individually syndicated deals. The simplest way to start a conversation about funds is to set them apart from the numerous kinds of individually syndicated products we have to offer. In a fund structure, a fund sponsor oversees the fundraising for a particular fund where money will be invested according to a particular investment plan. To put it another way, investors only dedicate money for general real estate investment. Investors typically have no control in which homes are sought after when specific properties are purchased in the future. For instance, a private equity firm might raise money for a multifamily venture with the intention of using the money to buy apartment complexes later on. When a deal is syndicated, the deal sponsor raises money to pay for a particular piece of real estate. Investors are aware which property will be bought with their equity investment in this situation. There are at least 10 components that prospective investors should think about in order to comprehend how a typical private equity fund structure operates. Number one, legal structure. The legal form of a typical fund investment is either a limited liability corporation, LLC, or a limited partnership, LP. These are businesses set up especially to handle the establishment and management of a fund. Individuals who make investments in the fund are actually buying stock in the business that controls the underlying real estate. The fund management will provide each individual share owner with a tax document at the end of each year that shows how much distribution income was generated and how much capital was deposited during the tax year. Number two, partners. In a private equity real estate fund, there are two groups of partners. The first group is referred to as the general partner, but they can also go by other names like sponsor, GP, or fund manager. They are the funds manager and are responsible for many significant tasks, such as obtaining investment cash, identifying properties, conducting due diligence on them, managing the fund, managing the properties, and adhering to all legal and tax requirements. Simply put, they handle all of the laborious aspects of managing investor funds by investing it on commercial real estate assets and overseeing the ongoing management of each property. Limited partners, also referred to as LPs, are simply investors 
are investors. They are those who decide to invest their money in a private equity real estate fund in order to make a return on their investment. Since the LP function is passive, LPs have no influence over choices regarding the management. Number 3. Limited Partnership Agreement The Limited Partnership Agreement is a document that specifies certain rules and obligations. Before writing an investment check, investors must read this paper carefully and comprehend its contents. It includes, among other things, a variety of important deals like official company name and mission, general or limited partner tasks and rules, decision-making and voting rights, equity shares, capital contributions from partners, process for dissolving the entity once the fund matures. Investors must be familiar with and at ease with these terms. Number 4. Term Different funds have different maturity dates. To find out if the fund is a maturity date and to make sure they are okay with it, investors should study the offering documentation. If it happens, the important thing to remember is that it will probably happen between 5 and 15 years from now. And as the fund closes, it might be obliged to sell its holdings regardless of market conditions. Number 5. Preferred Return Investors in some real estate funds receive a preferred return which entitles them to 100% of the cash flow and profits generated up until a predetermined return on their investment. Once this has occurred, any remaining funds are fairly distributed to the general and limited partners. A straightforward example can explain how a preferred return works, despite the fact that the arithmetic underlying it can be extremely complicated. Consider a fund that promises an 8% preferred return and raises $1 million from restricted partners. This means that until they have received a return of 8%, investors receive 100% of the income and profits generated by the assets held by the fund. After that, they can split any money still left with the fund manager 50-50. Again, these specifics are described in the offering documentation and should be fully comprehended before investing. Number 6. Capital Contributions The total amount of capital raised is specified along with the required contributions for each party in the Limited Partnership Agreement section on capital contributions. Investors should keep an eye out for two things. Even within this segment, investors should check to determine if the fund managers put any of their own money into the transaction first. It is not necessary for them to do so, but it might. In addition to their own original investment, investors should check the additional capital requirements. Frequently, there will be a clause that permits the fund manager to make a capital call when necessary, requiring investors to contribute additional funds in order to keep their ownership stake. It is critical to make this criterion clear up front because it might frequently come as a surprise. Number 7. Payout Investors should consider the following three factors to assess their potential payoff. To make sure the fund management has a history of consistently paying out investors, they should first look at their track record. Second, they should check to determine if and how much of a preferred return they are eligible for. The profit distribution between the general partner and the limited partners must also be understood. It should be set up so that the general partner is rewarded for successful money management but not at the expense of the limited partners. Number 8. Sponsors of Private Equity Real Estate A strong commercial real estate sponsor can make or break the performance of the real estate fund for investors. As a result, they ought to be assessed in light of their expertise, history of making profit, risk mitigation plan, ability to clearly communicate, senior management, and record for breaking regulations. A lot of this data is accessible to the general public. If it is not, investors should feel free to inquire as much as they need in order to be certain that the fund management will be a helpful partner. Number 9. Motivations and Promoted Interests The financial interests of the general partner and the limited partner are congruent in a perfect organization. The return structure is created in order to achieve this. Investors must take the time to comprehend it since it is distinct for each real estate fund. Let's say a fund raises $10 million, for instance, the general partner contributes $1 million, 10% of the total, 
and the remaining $9 million is raised through limited partners, or that's 99%. Up until they reach an 8% rate of return, this capital is invested in the properties and the limited partners receive 100% of the cash flow. Any money left over once this obstacle is cleared is divided in half, with 70% going to the limited partners and 30% going to the general partner. The term promote, which is short for promoted interest, refers to this additional 20% for the GP. The purpose of this arrangement is to motivate the general partner to generate a return greater than 8%. If they succeed, they will stand to receive a larger portion of the profit than they invested. And investors will be pleased because they received more. Number 10. Fees The type, amount, and structure of fees might differ for all real estate funds. Companies might charge fees for annual management, asset management, disposition, or debt placement, for instance. Investors should carefully consider the fee structure to make sure they are familiar with it and that it is reasonable compared to other funds in the sector. And that's it for this video, Real Talker. Remember to subscribe to our channel and if you feel like we have delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you will start to see results. See you soon.